Welcome back. This evening we see how Republicans and Democrats in Congress, at least some of them, are actually working together to get things done. Here's my colleague Brett Baer. Thanks, Jillian. It's time now for our Common Ground segment. Joining us tonight, Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons and North Dakota Republican Senator Kevin Kramer. Senators, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. You all are working on something called the Prove It Act, which essentially does what? <laughs> well, it proves it. it. What it does is it demonstrates what I think we already suspect, if not know, and that is that American businesses are put at a global disadvantage when other countries produce the same and manufacture the same products we do that are carbon intensive. What we want to do is prove that American industry is the cleanest industry in the world. So, you know, some stats on that. Total CO2 emissions in 2020, million metric tons. United States, uh, 4,258. China, uh, 10,081. If you look at this chart of annual emissions, China goes through the roof uh, in recent mm -hmm. years, Senator Coons. And obviously, this bill is a little bit pointed that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that this will lay the foundation for us to better protect American manufacturing. Uh, we manufacture steel and aluminum, and glass and cement here in the United States uh, in a low emissions way. Uh, the Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, other countries um, ship their products into our economy that are much higher emissions products. And if we ultimately end up putting tariffs on those high emissions products to protect our low emissions products, I think that'd be a good outcome. But Kevin and I are partnering on an initial bill, the Prove It Act, that does the study to lay the scientific foundation for whether or not we might do that in the future. But don't you kind of know the answer? Yes, so I, think I mean, yeah. you've got the top steel producing countries in 2022, China overwhelmingly. We are actually on fourth in this list. Why not just say, okay, we kind of know the answer why don't we just increase the tariffs well there's a couple of reasons for that one is um, other countries will want to use the lack of evidence against us and I already do to some degree <clears throat> we also have trading partners particularly in Europe that have carbon border adjustment mechanisms that have already done the study so we need to have demonstrated the same evidence to, to Chris's point so that if it comes down to that um, we can again prove that we're at par, if not cleaner, than they are. Are you all hopeful about U.S.-China relations? Or are you skeptical? Are you worried? What, what's the sense, Senator Coons? There's lots of tension in our relationship. Um, we have a robust economic relationship. We are big trading partners. But in terms of national security, uh, protecting America's inventions and innovation, um, and frankly, some of the grievance that's come from decades of our good jobs being shipped uh, to China, uh, there's a lot of tensions in the relationship. I'm encouraged by the recent visits by Secretary Yellen, Secretary Blinken, to China, it has taken it from an all-time low point to at least reopening conversation. Uh, but frankly, we have very different systems. The Chinese Communist <coughs> Party um, is really in control of that nation and its systems, and they are increasingly aggressive uh, globally and in their region. You all work on a number of different things. There's a lot of common ground. More and more of your colleagues are coming up here to talk about what they're working on. Um, Ukraine seems to be a bipartisan unity factor up there. Is that still true, even on the Republican side? Well, it, it's still true, and I think it's largely true, in fact. And, and I would say it, it's one of those things that ebbs and flows a little bit, Brett. Um, we have a, probably a little more concern because we have people that are concerned about our fiscal situation in the United States appropriately, concerned about the open southern border. <clears throat> but all of those, as important as they are, still shouldn't keep us from doing what we know to be the right thing and what we have bipartisan support for, and that is supporting Ukraine. and, and it, by doing so, making sure that the United States is also safe and that NATO is strengthened. And the cluster munitions move. Um, there's a story that unprepared for the long war, U.S. Army under the gun to make more ammo. Uh, as we're giving these cluster munitions, the Army's spending about $1.5 billion to try to ramp up production of 155 millimeter rounds. The president just said the other day, we're, we're running low. 
That's right. I, I supported the president's decision um, to dip into our stocks of cluster munitions to make sure the Ukrainians don't run out of 155 rounds during this counteroffensive. He has a plan. We are on a path towards strengthening production here in the United States as well as in Europe. But I'll remind you, the Ukrainians are running through um, these artillery shells at an amazing rate. They're firing six to 8,000 a day. That's a million a year. Um, we have to, in the long run, have a stronger industrial base. We've talked a number of times about working across the aisle, and you, you've highlighted that. For people at home who say this place is broken and it's all partisan, what do you say to them? Well, I appreciate this opportunity, Brett, to, to showcase these things because several networks don't. They showcase the confrontation. It's more fun to, to follow. That said, Chris and I work on a number of things together, um, low-income housing reforms, for example. Um, I'd also just say that Chris and I um, pray together on Wednesday mornings at, at the bipartisan prayer breakfast, Senate prayer breakfast. There's, there's a lot more unity than people get to see, and I appreciate the opportunity to highlight a little of it. We're praying that all works out. <laughs> Senators, thanks for the time. Fred, thanks for the segment. Thanks right. for the chance to be on. You can see all the Common Ground segments on my podcast, Common Ground. Find that in the All-Star Panel Podcast under the Big Umbrella, Brett Bear Podcast, foxnewspodcast.com, Spotify, or wherever you download podcasts. You can also see an extended discussion of this discussion on the Fox News YouTube page. Jillian, with that, we'll send it back to you. All right.